Welcome to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. My name is Ed Holinsky. Glad you could join us here today. Uh, we're going outside the box a little bit. Instead of talking to former NT players or maybe Tonawanda players, we're venturing out to the Kenmores and Kenmore East. And joining us today is Jeff Gemmer, who played in the middle to late 60s for Kenmore East. Glad you could join us today, Jeff. How's things going today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm looking forward to this. You played at Ken Maurice, graduated in 1967. Um, your big rivalry probably was Ken Maurice, Ken Moore West. Ken Maurice was one of the, the was the latter of the two schools to, to be created. Was it a time back then when you were considered the little brother of schools? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Ken Moore High School, as it was back then, uh, was. Uh, in fact, coached by uh, Dick Offenheimer, who ended up uh, being at uh, and coaching at UB. Uh, my dad went to uh, Bosdick Maston, which is now City Honors, and they played Kenmore back then. So that was that was a, a big game. He went on to uh, Syracuse uh, and was in Syracuse football camp for two weeks until his Army uh, Reserve Maston Armory Reserve unit got called up to World War II. And uh, he ended up going over and becoming a captain in the U.S. Army and uh, dropped in as a paratrooper on uh, A at Normandy. So, uh, you know, the connection there goes way back. Uh, Dad was a great athlete, uh, inherited a little of his uh, ability, uh, more heart than size and speed. In fact, uh, when I talked to players and coaches, uh, my thing was always, uh, I may be small, but I'm slow. So, but, uh, you know, I always succeeded, uh, you know, at, at a lower level in a lot of cases because I did love football and contact more than anything. I played a lot of sports, but uh, football turned out to be uh, my greatest uh, love as far as playing and coaching. And I coached five different sports uh, at Canisius High School where I was uh, a head teacher. I coached for 42 years. Uh, I coached a few of the Twin City Gemini guys and, uh, and taught. And, uh, you know, I, my first year was under, was the last year of uh, legendary John Barnes, who uh, was 42 and 0 and 1 at one point, had the state uh, undefeated record. And that was uh, started at uh, Bishop Duffy and ended at Bishop Duffy, which would turn into Niagara Catholic and uh, then uh, eventually closed. So, but uh, I've always had a great interest in Kemmer East, even when I was coaching elsewhere. I, I taught and coached at Canisius, uh, well, taught there the entire time, and coached uh, JV football, freshman football, varsity football. I also coached football at St. Mary's of Lancaster, where we were uh, small school champs for four years. And that team's going in, those teams are going in uh, this spring at their banquet, put off from last spring because of the pandemic and uh, a little bit at Winslow East who is now an opponent, uh, a guy that I uh, taught with at Ganesha's, Craig Krasansky is the head coach at Winslow South who plays Ken Maurice now. So it's a lot of interconnections. Uh, I did play for coach Adams. Uh, and uh, even before that, a lot of the Ken Maurice players were my heroes. And uh, uh, my family all went to Ken Maurice. Uh, older brother Ross graduated in 65, my sister Jerry in 68 behind me, and my younger brother in 75. He was there for the, uh, he was a hockey player, but he was there when Patty O'Brien, who lived near us, uh, led the 74 team to a 7-1 record and uh, eventually business and uh, into the Hall of Fame. Uh, how uh, my wife's family all went to my family, all went to uh, Kenmore East also. Uh, my late wife uh, passed away four years ago, and uh, her sisters and brothers all went to Kenmore East. Uh, and her one sister's kids all went to Kenmore East. So our uh, loyalty and uh, uh, Friendship with Ken Maurice goes back a long way and continues to this day as I uh, am going to their practice today. Ken Maurice practices today under uh, Coach Brian Hillman and one of the 
guys who helped me under the with the alumni team. I coached the alumni team for the last three years, Ben East against Ken West, for one game a year. And uh, last year we beat them first time 16 to 8 in the rainstorm. So, uh, again, uh, a lot of people involved in Kenmore East, and they became lifelong friends. Uh, to me, there's no substitute for uh, team players and guys who you've gotten along with all your life. They are lifelong friends, uh, and uh, including uh, many from Kenmore East and a bunch from Kenmore West, you know, from my era. Um, love, Jeff love Biden Baker was all well. Awesome. Yep, let, go ahead. Let, let me ask you about when you played back in, in the mid, mid 1960s, how would you characterize the play of the Niagara Frontier League? Because you had small schools, medium sized schools and large schools competing with one another. How was the play back then? Uh, they were pretty competitive. Not pretty competitive other than, uh, you know, some of the smaller schools suffered. Uh, when I was a senior, we beat uh, Trot 71 to nothing. And uh, that was not uh, an equal, now they would now they have them by sizes, which is better. Back then it was NFL, and uh, we played and West played on the same field at Crosby, and we played away one week and home the next on a grass field. And uh, by the end of the season, it was pretty torn up. When we played Niagara Falls, my senior year was on a snow covered field, and uh, I remember uh, with a seven seven tie knocking uh, all NFL running back Dave Smith out of bounds at the two yard line to. Uh, Stopped them from scoring and kept the tie. But, uh, you know, that was uh, one of my lucky plays, I guess, uh, hustle play. Um, but, uh, you know, I went through uh, this book. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Uh, the, uh, can you see that? No, I okay. can't see it. No. Okay. Okay. It is the uh, north, north is east and south is west. 50 plus years of Kenmore East versus Kenmore West, 1959 to 10. This is where 2010, this is where I took most of my information out of, other than the yearbooks, which I still have from around my time. So um, I'll set that aside. Um, I'm holding a uh, Ken Maurice alumni jersey. You see that? Yep. Okay. That was, uh, I bought these for my uh, players. Uh, after my wife passed away, I got the life insurance and uh, I took that and uh, bought jerseys for the guys. I took their life insurance and said, just do me a favor as a uh, Ken Maurice former player and fan. So just wear them around the area and promote it. You know, uh, they had all played for uh, either uh, Green Acres Cardinals or uh, uh, Bills Bombers, Lincoln Park Lions, all those little league teams. I was lucky enough to play for the Green Acres Cardinals uh, football and baseball. And uh, from Ken Maurice, uh, you know, Coach Adams uh, gave me a referral and I ended up playing uh, Brockport uh, D3 and starting at nose at 165, uh, one gapper. And uh, we played a 5-3 and the linebacker behind me was Phil Hevestro, one of my uh, great friends who just passed away, who was a uh, director of the Wellness Institute of Buffalo. And we're, he went to O'Hara. He was on the first O'Hara undefeated team. The first team they had was undefeated with, uh, you know, local heroes, uh, Doug Hartmeyer, uh, Jimmy and Bobby Bauer, uh, you know, those kind of guys coached by uh, legendary uh, Mo Drilling, you know, who uh, went to Canisius High School. But uh, so there's a lot of connections. Uh, my guys, uh, you know, that I played with, uh, Ryden Baker, Nelson, uh, 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 Paul Wilson, Chuck Fancourt, Keffrelli, Jimmy Krieg. Uh, I connected, uh, I've been connected with uh, Jim McNally, Moss McNally, who has, uh, you know, done a lot of work with uh, linemen, colleges, high school. Uh, I coached John Urschel a little bit at Canisius High School, who went on to play with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And uh, McNally used to come to our school and work with linemen in his uh, duck demeanor, uh, lineman technique. Uh, but uh, I usually see him at Christmas time. They have a thing at Caputi's uh, East and West guys, you know, together. Uh, uh, cheerleader wise, uh, you know, uh, I went out with a couple of our cheerleaders 
from my time after my wife passed away, uh, Katie Saliba Everlin, uh, Nancy Durrell, uh, Debbie Cannon, and ended up with uh, Carol Jones de Carlos, who was a friend of my wife's in same sorority, and uh, her son Christian and my son Chris, who is in Georgia. He's a lieutenant colonel in the Army after with 20 years and three deployments. Uh, they were in the same class uh, in kindergarten at uh, Alexander Hamilton. Those were the boomer days when everybody uh, bounced around a lot uh, from different schools. And, uh, you know, I went to, uh, started out at Franklin, went to Brighton, went to Ridgeway School in Canada and stayed at my grandparents' cottage when our house was being built. And then uh, eventually uh, ended up at Green Acre School where, uh, you know, my uh, summer guy, that the guy who ran the playground was John Stern. Uh, he was the phys ed teacher there also at Green Acres and turned out to, my, to be my JV baseball coach at uh, Kenmore East. So uh, these guys, uh, uh, Jimmy Krieg was one of my teammates who went on to play for uh, University of Washington with Sonny Sixkiller and, uh, and ended up with, uh, played for the Broncos and lived with Lyle Alzado, uh, the uh, famed... Uh, uh, Denver Bronco, and uh, finished with the Portland Storm of the WFL. I watched his last catch on TV, uh, typical Creek catch where uh, he's up in the air, 36 inches off the ground, makes a catch, was cut, and landed right on the top of his head, uh, Don Beebe style, and that was the end of his career. But uh, he did well. He opened up a uh, uh, liquor store in Palm Springs, uh, Married with two kids, uh, divorced, but uh, he passed away uh, about three years ago. We had a uh, get together at Caputi's, as most of the Ken Maurice things are. All our reunions are at Caputi's, uh, and he passed away, but we all got to talk to him. All his teammates got to talk to him before he passed, and uh, that was great. Uh, he was obviously all league, all NFL, all Western New York, and he's come back. Uh, when he's come back, I took him to my practice, a summer practice, and he worked with receivers and punt returners, as did Phil McConkey, who uh, I had at Canisius High School, caught a you know, touchdown pass in the 87 Super Bowl. And uh, he was famous for uh, Bill Parcells telling him, uh, you know, you catch the ball on the fly and made him catch one ball, hold it, catch another punt, hold it, and couldn't leave until he caught a third one and held all three, then he could leave practice time. But uh, that's just a remembrance I have. And uh, Johnny Barnes Jr. Uh, was at Canisius. Uh, he coached at Turner Carroll and coached Corey Graham, who uh, ended up playing in the pros and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, Chet Bowler was a former NT uh, standout, was the first AD, first athletic director in Kenmore. And he hired uh, Jack Oakers who taught uh, phys ed at uh, Kenmore and then moved over to Kenmore East when they opened in uh, the fall of 59. Uh, first uh, uh, game between East and West was obviously a, uh, not obviously, but was a West win with McNally playing center and uh, Fraunhofer, the cat Paul Fraunhofer who went on to play uh, with the Geminis and I played with him on the Lockport Travelers and when we folded, uh, the Geminis took over for one year. There were both teams there. And I played against my buddy, Barry Smith, who uh, you know, was a three-sport star. I uh, went to Ithaca College. And before freshmen could play varsity, uh, he earned nine letters, uh, football, hockey, and lacrosse at Ithaca College. He went on to play for the Philadelphia Stars of the WFL and uh, then did college hockey, coached college hockey, and uh, – Ended up with Scotty Bowman and has won five Stanley Cup rings. Uh, I rent my his cottage with Robbie Santa Maria, another Kenmore West, uh, one of the radar defense tackles at five uh, six and one fifty five. Uh, Jakubovic, uh, you know, was the longtime coach and nemesis of uh, Coach uh, Sparky Adams, uh, but uh, he used those uh, little guys and red. Instead of making direct contact, uh, they did the reading thing. And uh, uh, 
the big line we had, the D line at Kenmore East at the time, you know, they were big and uh, we averaged probably 225 with me playing DN at 165, but we have Brighton Baker at 225, Paul Wilson, three sport star at uh, 195, and the gargantuan Dick Rose at 265. For that, right. for those days, it was huge. All right. Okay? All right. You're making my job easy because I can't ask any questions. You realize this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I did a lot of did a lot of research. You know what? Hold on. Let me ask a couple of questions. Grab a sip of water. You'll be fine. I mean, um, let me uh, talking about Kenmore West and, and Coach Yakupovich and his radar defense. In your estimation, was it a good defense or was it overrated? Uh, I think it was good for the times. I mean, we ended up senior year playing them first game. Why? Because I guess there was too much vandalism going on and too much going back and forth, bad blood between the schools. So we played them first game of the season. We had 18 lettermen coming back. We were definitely the favorites. And we were up, I believe, at least 14 nothing, if not 21 or 19 nothing at halftime. And we got beat 21 uh, 19. Now, let me ask you this about what are your, what are your memories about Ken Maurice versus North Tonawanda? During your uh, playing days. Well, I looked into that. Uh, you know, I did this year by year. And, uh, you know, in 60 or 59, uh, I didn't have that. But Jerry Gurgley played for West. Uh, Chuck Bellow was the stud for uh, Ken East and lost to Kenmore West 12 to 9. Uh, 62, they tied Ken East and West. Uh, the radar got going in 63, uh, lost. 19 to six, uh, where am I here with Kenny Rutkowski, Gary Dean, George Constantino. Uh, uh, Adams took over in uh, 64 and he coached till 77. Uh, the Bills uh, lost to NT, 64, 12-3. Uh, they finished 4-3 and won that year, uh, but beat West 7-0. Greg Walters uh, was all West New York. Uh, he uh, went on to UB, play at UB. He was captain of uh, East and uh, a main, main cog at UB at the time. Uh, he, uh, and became a, uh, a phys ed teacher and uh, coach in the Rochester school system. I saw him many times at track meets. His uh, daughter, Teresa, uh, ran track. And in fact, we... Uh, saw each other at the uh, Yale Indoor National Championships where I had a uh, decathlete and he had his daughter, a distance runner there. Let uh, me ask you about, 65, let me ask you. We, I'm sorry. Let me ask you about the Twin City Geminis. Okay. There were guys who, you know, played high school football. Some of them went on to college and played division one or division three. Why did they feel the need that they had to continue playing football? Uh, I mean, I played myself for the Lockport Travelers two years, 69, when I flunked out of Brockport and uh, immediately did some uh, military duty for a year. I did a year uh, active and then came back and had uh, five more years to go at Niagara Falls. Uh, so every once in a while at Brockport, I mean, I started one year in 70, uh, 70 and uh, I would miss a game for a, a a, a monthly drill. I'd have to drive back to uh, Niagara Falls and uh, everybody was going to bed. You know, we were bouncers back then, you know, at the uh, Rat Skeller, which Phil Havistro was the manager of, uh, a Twin City Gemini. But uh, uh, when everybody went home to sleep, I went home, put on my uniform, drove to Niagara Falls and slept in the car until they woke me up for formation at seven o'clock in the morning. And but I would miss a game every once in a while and uh, miss a football game coaching wise because I was in the guard from 69 to 75 and I started teaching and coaching at 72. Uh, so I played in 69 for the Travelers and I played in 72 uh, that summer. Uh, like the third game, I, ripped, I came back from uh, Denver where I was at tech school, came back. Uh, Played for the Geminis and worked full time, went to night school to get my grades back up so I could get back in. I got two A's at Niagara Community, uh, worked during the day. We practiced three nights a week, so that tied me up. I got hurt in the third game. I ripped up my knee and uh, 
had to get that uh, taken care of. I taught, started teaching health and phys ed on crutches at Canisius High School. I had gotten married two weeks after uh, I graduated from Brockport, got married two weeks later and started to teaching two weeks after that. Uh, principal was named Don Devine, who was also the name of my father-in-law, Don Devine. It was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I played uh, that season and that was it for me. You know, I had played rugby from the time we started in 1970 and played through uh, 71 when I started coaching. My uh, roommate from college who went on to, Jim Rogers, who went on to coach at Eastern Illinois with uh, Janahan and uh, uh, Michigan State with Saban and uh, ended up at uh, University of Florida under Charlie Pell uh, before the uh, penalties came down there. Uh, Charlie gave him a uh, briefcase of uh, money and told him to give it to a recruit and he threw it back at him and said, I'm done. Here you go. Take this. And uh, so he went into banking, did very well. And uh, Jim Rogers uh, Retired from Five Star Bank. Uh, I played golf with him at his uh, uh, at uh, the club in Rochester, uh, Oak uh, Oak Hill, and uh, saw the many plaques uh, on the West Course. Uh, sure, you've shared a lot of memories and did a lot. You've done a lot of name dropping during this interview. Yeah, or, I know. Or, or what not? Um, what would what would you say about uh, your high school career or, or playing football in the 1960s? That's the final question. What would you say about football in the 1960s in the Niagara Front? Final Coast? question. I got a lot of stuff here. <laughs> it was terrific. We got great crowds. I mean, East West games. We would get five to ten thousand people. You know, uh, 66 uh, game my senior year. We were five two and one. And uh, we went out, 21 seniors, you know, we're cocky and we're going to win this game. We go out there in our uh, uniforms without pads. We come back in and hanging in our lockers were new practice jerseys, which we wore for the game, beat on one shoulder, West on the other. So when we got down in our stance, it said beat West and facing them. And, uh, you know, unfortunately we didn't. Those became practice jerseys. And uh, ironically, uh, but when I played basketball for uh, Ken East, we went and scribbaged uh, Canisius High School and the locker room they put us in was unlocked. And my practice jersey, game jersey that year got stolen from <laughs> Canisius High School. So, uh, uh, All right, Jeff, we need to wrap this up. I want to thank you so much for sharing wonderful memories from Ken Maurice High School and uh, Niagara Frontier League football. Also, uh, Twin City Geminides. Uh, information as well too thank you so much you've been a great host and a great guest i should say i should say you were the host because you were just the way you, you were you're going on but i say that as a compliment okay. i wish you i wish you good luck best of health and thank you so much for joining us just remembering a couple north Tonawanda players uh you know playing against wechek and krensky krensky went to uh brockport uh andrzejewski craig nebelecki Okay, uh, we check killed us in his uh, junior year and Mix killed us in his senior year, Denny Mix. So those are guys I remember. So, thanks for Jeff, having me. Jeff, thanks so much. Bye-bye.